There are two things for sure that I know about you guys. One, you love saving money, and two, you love making your own stuff. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to replace seven store-bought products with your own DIY cleaners. And obviously, it'll be for pennies on the dollar. And just a quick reminder, if you haven't done so already to subscribe to the Clean My Space channel, give this video a thumbs up if you would tell a friend if they had food stuck in their teeth. Whether you have a smelly pet, a gassy partner, hey! or, or if your microwave just smoked up like ours did literally 10 minutes before we started shooting, there's always a use for a room refreshing spray, whether it's to just make your room smell better or the actual fabrics, you know, the blinds, the upholstery, the window treatments, that kind of stuff in your room smell better. There is definitely a product out there. Now you could buy it in store or you can make your own. I'm adding one cup of water and one cup of cheap plain vodka and then 20 drops of my favorite essential oil. Here I'm using lavender, but use anything. Put it in a clean spray bottle, give it a good old shake, and then just use your nose. Spray accordingly. Definitely don't be shy. Soap scum is that sticky, kind of tacky, grayish, brownish buildup that you get on your shower walls and in your tub. And soap scum basically comes from dead skin cells, body oils, any soap remnants that are left behind and hard water deposits. And it all just mixes up together and forms this not so nice scum that you then need to deal with. So typically the way that's dealt with is a tub and tile cleaner or a general bathroom cleaner and you can pick these up in store. Now you can get it either in a spray format like this or you can get it in a cream cleanser or even in a powdered cleanser format. Now if you like the store-bought stuff, great, but if you want to make your own, here's a simple recipe. Add half a cup of baking soda and half a cup of dish soap to a little bowl and then find a citrus-based essential oil and you can add five to 10 drops of that. Really helps cut soap scum. Stir it up with your sponge, get your sponge a little bit wet, and then just apply it to the soap scummy surface. You can use the S pattern to do this. I apply it with the soft side of the sponge, then I flip over to the scrubby side. Give it a real good rinse. I've been using this for years. A lot of you use it as well. It is awesome and it works like a charm. Make sure you rinse really well though. Y'all know what this color means, don't you? It's glass cleaner. And whether you buy it in store or you make your own and put blue food coloring in it, which is effectively what we've done here, it's still gonna clean your glass essentially the same way. The difference is one uses ammonia, one doesn't. So you decide, you be the judge, you get what's best for you. Here I'm adding one cup of water and one cup of vinegar. You can dial it up or dial it down given the size of your spray bottle. Give it a good shake, add that blue food coloring if it makes you feel better, and then find someone to clean the glass for you. That was my excuse, at least while I was pregnant. Chad does a great S pattern, doesn't he? Thumbs up for Chad's S pattern. Here are two bottles. They can both be used to clean your toilet, and only one can be used to dispense ketchup. So toilet bowl cleaner is something that obviously you can buy in store, obviously it's effective, but if you want to save money, make your own and use something that's a little bit more health and environmentally conscious, you can always pick up one of these little squeeze bottles and fill it with the following recipe. Here I'm adding a cup of water, a half cup of baking soda, a half cup of dish soap, and a quarter cup of hydrogen peroxide, giving it a good shake over there. You can throw some essential oils in too if you like, and then I'm just applying it to the toilet as you would with any old toilet bowl cleaner. Give it a good scrub, you know the deal. Flushy, flushy, drip dry, life is good. Where there is moisture and there is dark, damp areas, there is inevitably, inevitably going to be mold and mildew. And that's when a mold and mildew cleaner comes in handy. But a lot of you guys don't like using them because you feel that they're very strong. Now they are typically quite effective, but if you do wanna make your own, I can give you a solution. And by the way, there's the preventative measure, which is getting rid of all of the moisture and turning on your overhead exhaust fan or opening a window for 30 minutes before 
during and then of course 30 minutes after your shower that will help air dry everything very quickly not allowing any mold and mildew to build up the other thing you can do is take a towel or a microfiber cloth or even a squeegee and just get rid of any of that excess moisture before you leave the shower which will also help reduce or eliminate any of that mold and mildew now if you have mold and mildew in your laundry room or your washing machine you guys know i always tell you just leave that laundry door open and that will solve the problem. But if you wanna make your own product instead of buying one in the store, here's that recipe. Here I'm adding a half cup of borax, a quarter cup of vinegar, and again, I employed Chad to do some cleaning for me. You can apply this to the area that has the mold or mildew, give it a good scrub, then rinse your sponge, give it a nice wipe, and of course, you wanna polish it up with a good old microfiber cloth. If I ever need to use the bathroom, whether it's at someone's house or in a public restroom situation, I always judge that place, and frankly, those people, on the quality of their hand soap. I am quite particular when it comes to what I like to wash my hands with. And hands down, no pun intended, I love foaming hand soap. But I gotta tell you guys, it's expensive and you need to have the right pump in order to get that foam. So rather than going out and continuing to buy foaming hand soap all the time, we have the pumps at home and we just make our own. So if you wanna do the same, here's the recipe that we use. Add about a cup of water to the pump and to that you're going to add about a teaspoon of soap. I use Castile soap. And following that, you will add 10 to 20 drops of your favorite essential oil. This is so great because you can be real creative here. Give it a good shake and there is your foamy hand soap. For anyone who dubs themselves cleaning royalty, be it king, be it queen, this would probably be your scepter, and that's cool. But you'd probably have to go and purchase replacement cloths for these all the time, whether it's this brand or any other floor sweeping product like this. So instead of going out and buying those replacements, why don't you use a good quality microfiber cloth instead? And of course, I'm using one of our makers cloths. I'll put a link to them down below. So as long as your dusting tool, whether it's for floor or ceiling or anything like that, has the mechanism where you can lock a cloth into it, rather than using the disposable one, you can just use a reusable one. And the cool thing about this is that you can use it wet, of course, to mop up. So you can take a spray bottle along with you and do a bit of mopping. You can use it dry just to do some quick dusting or quick pickups of pet hair or anything else that's on the floor. You can even use this to clean your walls, your ceilings, you know, any crooks and nooks and crannies and crooks and fannies or whatever it is that you have around your house that needs cleaning. But just consider replacing the disposable ones with a microfiber cloth. And that brings me to this week's comment question, although it is a little bit unrelated to what I just talked about. And that goes back to what I asked you earlier. Would you guys tell your friend or not a friend if they had some food in their teeth? Like, would you let someone down that way? Would you just let them go out into the world with something green or red or brown wedged between their pearly whites? Let me know in the comments down below. Now, when I initially asked that, Luke cut the camera and then he said, what, do I, do I have something in my teeth? So it's actually really funny when you see people get really paranoid about stuff stuck in their teeth. Anyway, let me know in the comments down below or if you have a really embarrassing story about food getting stuck in your teeth, let me know that as well. Here are a couple of other videos I think you're going to love. And if you wanna learn about our Maker's Clean Microfiber Cloths, you can click this button right over here. There's a button down there that lets me know you care. So click it if you liked this video and click this button right here to subscribe and begin your journey to a cleaner life. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time.